and hello everybody yay happy mlk day <laughs> ah, i'm so excited to be here with one of my besties and just an amazing woman an amazing speaker a humanitarian someone who fights and loves for just equality and walking in love in our planet and um we've been doing a lot of work together and i just adore her and she will tell you more about herself uh, but she is laura king the founder of the rodney king foundation and we'll give you more information about what that is and how to reach out and get involved because it is amazing okay laura hi hi how are you <laughs> i'm doing great always happy always a big big smile when i'm with you of course you're the best coach in the world <laughs> <laughs> thank you <laughs> well, thank you thank you for doing this i really appreciate it especially nowadays it's hard because there's no parade here this year so due to COVID, so this actually will help a lot of people Yes, and you're in Los Angeles area. Yes. Now, tell us about that parade. You know what? I'm sad because this is the first year they haven't had it, you know, due to COVID. So I'm sure a lot of people are a little disappointed, but, you know, there's really nothing we can do. So I know they had a visual um, parade this morning. Yeah. Oh, that's good. Okay, awesome. So t tell us about your story. Why are you an advocate for change? and for love in in our country and in the planet you know um it's an unfortunate situation what happened to my father um the beating but you know i think he learned how to do the same thing i learned from him which is take pain and use it for purpose to make good um until you leave this place um because we all have a domino effect on people and it's like if we take our anger, frustration and things like that and bottle it up and don't use it to help other people or help ourselves, then it's just going to be like toxic, you know? Yeah. Um, so I just, I just choose to use my pain to push me forward. Absolutely. And I, and I just love, you know, something that we've been talking about is, is how you have a heart for fathers and for, especially, you know, fathers to be involved in the lives of their children so uh, was that inspired by your relationship with your dad or how did that come about actually it was inspired by my relationship with my dad because i realized that um you know a girl's first love is her father and a boy's example is his father so um and i'm a mother i feel safe saying this yeah. a father is a very 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 important role in children's life because that is the foundation to everything to self-esteem to pride to love um, they learn everything from the foundation you know so um, i'm just a big advocate on um just encouraging dads because we have so many things as women you know and then it's when it comes to dads it's like they include them with graduation grads and dads they don't get their <laughs> own day you know so yeah i just wanna, i just want to promote them because um you know oftentimes men are somewhat prideful they'll never admit like you know hello i exist so i just wanted to glorify them and just uplift them especially african-american men um, yeah. because right now they're basically you know instinct um going extinct if things keep going the way they are so and i think that they're very important and we need them here you know and at the end of the day if we're all different colors, we're still brothers and sisters, you know, in God's, in God's eyes, we're brothers and sisters, whether we realize it or not. So the sooner we understand that, the more we'll understand, you know, we all have a domino effect on the world. So how you treat other people, your kids are watching you and your kids are going to do the same thing, either what you do or the opposite or worse. So, you know, I just encourage everybody to have the domino effect. I love it. I love it so much. So let's talk about that a little bit. So we know that, you know, Martin Luther King Jr. Just, he just fought for equality and he had a dream that we would be that seen as God sees us, uh, not by the color of our skin, uh, right. but, but by the content of our character. And right. the color of our skin is beautiful. So we, you know, we can appreciate those colors. Um, yeah. But what he was trying to do was to make us see beyond that, because, right. you know, uh, it, it is 
really irritating to me and frustrating, to be honest with you, when somebody says, I don't see color. And that's not what Martin Luther King was saying is, you know, see my color and love me. Right. Don't you agree? Yes. yes. <laughs> I mean, that's like we can choose our colors in the rainbow, but they're all they are part of the rainbow. Same thing. Same thing. Absolutely. And see my color and understand my struggles because of my color. So what what do you think? You know, we, we know that he fought for that. Then your father came in and he his story just shook the world because it was such a horrid brutality. And we're still dealing with this today. So right. even though, you know, people like, like Dr. King and like your father, and so many people are doing so much to affect change in this society, it, it, mm -hmm. we're still struggling with the, you know, all, all, all of the, the repercussion of violence and discrimination, and uh, people being racist and people being uh, just absolutely discriminatory of people of color, especially if African-American community, because nobody really understands that experience unless you are a black person. So tell me right. what, what you think and what are your thoughts and, and how do you deal with that? You know, it's crazy. My thoughts are like all over the place because I want to heal the world. But, you know, of course, <laughs> yeah. realistically, it is what it is. And we're still in the same position. Although now I see a little bit like I have you know, I have like this much faith as a mustard seed because I see other nationalities speaking up now. Other yeah. people are affected because they have to explain this thing, these things to their children, you know, whereas before, because we were exposed to the internet. And so they, they have it right there. So you can't, you know, you can't explain a lie to your kid because it's, it's very visual. So yeah. I think, I think that gives me hope that other people are like, okay, enough is enough. We're, we're tired and we're affected by this because, you know, there's, different nationalities of friendships of even um, family members, you know, nowadays yeah. people are biracial people. Are, so a lot more people are affected personally by this. So I think, um, I think there is hope. Like I look to see that there is hope. I do actually. Oh, I love it so much when you talk like that. And I, I, I really agree that you can't turn your back to it anymore. And that yeah. it is something, I think that people, because of the online spread of this issue I think that people can't be in a bubble anymore because I think everyone was kind of in their own bubble and they didn't know um, so I think the awareness is really helping um, yeah. and and how do you think that people can be an ally to this movement of equality and love for all humanity you know, I think the internet is very important nowadays because, you know, you can hashtag something. And I find myself looking up a hashtag where I, I would just make something up and look it up and then I'd be surprised because there's already information on that. And I think, you know, if you feel like you, you don't know what to do, worst case scenario or best case scenario, make a post and hashtag walking in love, hashtag sock racism, hashtag Rodney King Foundation or whatever tugs at your heart to make a difference, um, just understand that your voice is powerful and your voice is very much needed in today's society because uh, look where we are, even though we haven't made much progress, we're still further along. People are, you know, not just African-American are speak up, speaking up, everybody's speaking up. So your yeah. voice is needed, you know? We welcome you at the Rodney King Foundation, uh, rodneyking.org to Give us your feedback. We'd love to hear from you. Keep you updated on newsletters, how you can make a difference because there's different groups that you can join just like we're doing right now and just having um, personal intimate conversations. You know, I look at the way that Dr. King conducted himself and it sometimes I feel like I want that strength because sometimes I get angry, I get frustrated. Like there, I don't even think I've seen anything where he reached that level. You know, he was like everything possible. He was beaten. And yet he still turned the other cheek and tried to find a solution. Whereas I'm still learning those processes because I'm human, you know, so yeah. we're all human. So we all are. <laughs> yeah. I just, today is like very sentimental because it's like, you know, his children now have to, you know, sometimes you don't want to, you know, sometimes you just want to have a, one of those days, but you can't, you have to use that courage of your ancestors to push you through because look what they went through. And yet, and still, still here we are, who would have ever thought, I'm sure he would have never thought that 
United States will have a day named after him. I would, yeah. I want to get to a place where it's a federal holiday where everybody, yes. is off. you know, I went to patients today and it was like, why are you guys open? You know, but yeah. I get it. You know, I get it. Yeah. And, and I think it should be a global day right. as a matter of fact. And, yeah. and one of the, my favorite quotes um, to honor his legacy is he who passively accepts evil is as much involved in it as he who helps perpetrate it. And he who accepts evil without protesting against it is really cooperating with it. So he was really clear that silence is not an option. Uh And And that this is how we honor the legacy of Martin Luther King Jr. is by not keeping quiet, by speaking up, by... You know, but but also I want to say, because, you know, we're talking about the foundation sure. is, you know, it's not only putting your mouth where your heart is, it's also putting your pocket where your heart is, because yeah. it's really, you know, uh, really uh, great to say, you know, I love my black friends, but if I'm not supporting my black friends, then then it, it is an incomplete you know, right. love is action. So if you're watching this and you want to make a difference, yes, do those hashtags and put up those posts. But like Laura said, you know, get involved in the foundation as well so that it, it, we can absolutely spread the message. Um, and I love what you're doing with the foundation. Um, what What is your favorite Martin Luther King quote or saying or or some concept that he said that really stuck with you, some lesson that you learned from him? You know, um, one of them, I don't know the exact wording, but you know, it's like, he says, push forward, regardless if you can see the stairway or not, you know that there's a path. So just keep yeah. pushing forward. And, and the character, you know, um, people will judge you by your character, not what you look like, you know, and that's, that's, it's weird because we live in a society now where like social media is taken over, like, well, if you look like this, then it's, it's like, no, who are you at the core? Like yeah. that plays a huge part, you know, that's, that opens a lot of doors for us, you know, he was a super humble man. And it's like, if sometimes us as Americans and us as the world period, everybody would humble themselves and get to know someone. Yeah. we would be so much further along. Yeah, I think that, you know, I always say to my, you know, this is something that I've taught my daughters that if you know somebody's story, there's no yeah. option but to love them because we're yeah, all going through something and we all, all come from something. And so, that's you know, that's, that's just, I think at the core, yes, uh, when we listen to understand and not so much to speak and to be opinionated but when we actually listen to somebody and and see their suffering and their pain um and and again it is different when you have privilege and pain and when you have pain and no privilege yeah powerful what was that i said powerful point yes that's so true (laughs) <laughs> yeah, because you know that it's true, you know, um, and that takes me to the Black Lives Matter, you know, um, movement, where, of course, every children of God, you know, all children of God matter. But the point of the hashtag and the movement is that Black lives are treated like they don't matter, you know, and right. that that is the point. So, yeah. um so Laura, uh, we're just going to keep it really short because, you know, it's a, it's a day to rejoice and be <laughs> glad in it that we, that we yeah. celebrate someone so amazing like Martin Luther King Jr., you know, the reverend, the doctor, the, the just dreamer. And yeah. one of the things that I always tell my kids when they complain, of course, I complain too, but, and they <laughs> tell me as well, is, you know, Oh, remember when Martin Luther King had a complaint? (laughs) Because, you know, we always talk about our complaints and very seldom we talk about our dreams. So something that I learned from him is that whenever there's a, you know, wrong situation with the world, something's unfair, something is really um, infuriating or, or 
pressing or just something that is wrong with the world uh, to talk about our dreams and not talk about our complaints because he could have made a speech complaining about so much. There was so much injustice going on. You know, there, there, was, there, there was so much violence, so much discrimination mm -hmm. and, and people being treated like they weren't human. And so, but he chose to talk about the dream and the vision. So for the Rodney King Foundation and to honor your father, what is your vision? What my is your vision, dream? My vision one day is to envision us getting along, envision um, us being equal. Um, I see that, like I can, I, I, I visualize that and I visualize it quite often. That's why I'm able to do what I do because I believe in it. I know so many people of different nationalities that are amazing human beings. And so with that being said, that's why I'm able to keep going as hard as I can, because one day I think we will get there. You know, I don't think he died in vain. I think that um, his message lives on and, you know, you and I are demonstrating that right now. We, you know, we're different shades, but yet we're figuring out a solution. And I feel like as long as we're all pushing for a solution, we will get there. Um, as long as, the world opens up a little bit more and, you know, just listen more, whereas just passing judgment, you know, as a saying, if we walk in love, we'll be much further. But if we, we continue going the way we are, we're still going to be at a standstill. Yeah, absolutely. And um, finally, uh, so the, it's RodneyKing.org. Yes, it's www.RodneyKing.org. Okay. Yes. And, and Finally, I want to I want to ask you, what is the the favorite thing that you do with the foundation? Like, what is paint me a picture of when people get involved, what they can make happen? Um, do you have a favorite story or a favorite moment that you can share of I something that happened? <laughs> Actually, just this past um, just this past Saturday, we've been doing events called warm days of blessings because here in California at night, it's been extremely cold. I know California, it's not cold, but it is, it's freezing yeah. at night. And so we put together these care packages with hygiene kits, um, sleeping bags, uh, blankets, uh, COVID packages, um, food, so that they feel loved, you know? And it's like, what better thing to do than give a warm blessing? Because I know what it's like to be cold. I know what it's like to be hungry. That's just a general thing you know and it's like if you give from your heart there's no such thing as as less you know as long as you're giving from your heart and you give from a place that you understand that helps people and it's just like humbling to see you know these people are like extremely grateful for basic things that we get that we take for granted and it's like that's why I'm pushing for donations that's why I'm pushing for people to get involved because it's like we can all be in all these situations and we don't realize that we think yeah. that we're you know, it's not that we think that we're better, but we never have that thought, you know, and, and a lot of people on Skid Row, a lot of people are homeless, they have degrees, they have families, they're human beings, you know, um, so I just, that's like a big thing, you know, the yearly toy drive, the, you know, um, this year was like a little restricted with COVID, but we were still able to bless so many kids, I did, I was able to do two of those turkey drives and food yeah. distributions, and especially with COVID, people lost their jobs, like people are really hungry. So yeah. it was just a blessing for people, you know, of course it was no contact. Most of the time they would drive up, we put it in their trunk, but that was just a blessing to me. Cause I know what it's like to be hungry. I've been hungry enough times to understand, mm -hmm. to know, you know, Yeah, yeah. Um, and the I am King scholarship, we were able to, to honor two African-American fathers. Um, one father, his wife had just lost her job. So it was a real blessing. We were able to award them $500 each. Um, I wanted to do more, but those were the only ones I can afford at the time. But it was really a blessing because the other gentleman, he was 21. He's a single father and, and he didn't have a babysitter for his daughter and he's a full-time musician. So he literally has to take her everywhere. So it was just a blessing to bless him, to yeah. be able to provide anything he was able to provide for her, food, clothes. Um, they were really grateful. You know, they were really grateful and it just helps me to keep going because I understand yeah. that it's it's a blessing for other people. Yeah. And, and if you're commenting below, I am going to um, reply shortly, but it is mentorship month. And uh, you and I were introduced by someone special to both of us. 
you. Mindy Garza, an, a fantastic author and just amazing altogether human being. And so she was your teacher. She was. She was my seventh grade English teacher. Yeah, and, she was. And she and she introduced us, and and that's how I came to be become Laura's coach. And what do you think is the most important thing for for someone to be a good mentor? I think a great um, I think a great mentor is someone who listens and is honest and um, sincere and um, and just understanding too. You know, I think those things are a major factor in being a good mentor. I love that because, you know, that is some another way that you could help, you know, it's not only make sure that that you get involved so that Laura can bless more people and Laura and her team at the Rodney King Foundation. And you can do that through RodneyKing.org, but also uh, just help someone else by being a friend, by being a mentor, by really guiding somebody. So there are so many ways that you can help. And again, Black Lives Matter means that we need it more. We need to help our Black fathers, our African-American community, because they have been marginalized and, and really mistreated for so long. Uh, we're happy that change is happening, that we've we've come some way, but we need to go all the way and walk in love together, like Laura's message says. And thank you so much, Laura, for your time. I love you so much. I love you too. And you know what? One last thing. We also do cultural awareness and um, like diversity um, meetings. Oh, because yay. Like those, those are the type of things where you some of us don't know, you know, it's things that we think we know, but we don't know. So um, that's another thing that we do. You know, if someone wants to hire us to come and speak to their, I've done several of those last year and it, and it really blessed my spirit to go because these were corporates, corporate companies. And um, we had Zoom meetings and it was just like open dialogue. And it was mm -hmm. like, people learn things. They learn things about themselves, about other people that will help them, you know? So I think those are big, important things in America as well. I love yep. that. Yes, that's so important. I love you, honey. I love you too. Thank you for okay. having me. Thank you, everybody. And I'm going to connect you, you all with Laura and you so give you much. all. The, what is your Insta real quick so that everybody can follow you? Sure. It's L-O-R-A um, underscore K-I-N-G-R-K-F. Okay. And, and I will I will put it on the description. I will edit it. Thank you so much. I love no, 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 you. Thank you. Love you too. See you soon. Bye. Monday. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Bye. Happy Monday. Bye bye. Bye.